Hi, welcome. This is Thomas with Wealthy Hair, and I'm the head lead designer, and I'll also be the point of contact for you if you have any questions moving forward with your website. I first want to congratulate you on joining the Wealthy Hair team. I'm sure you're excited to get going, so I'm going to make this video for you so you can uh, follow along and uh, get the first steps needed for us to get the website built for you. Um, I'm going to put the links to all the websites that we that I talk about here in the description area below the video for you as well. So the first step you want to go to is you want to go to GoDaddy.com and this is where you're going to find your domain name which is the website name that people type in to find your company online. So you're going to start off by typing you know whatever your idea is. Um, so like if you, if you have a brand name already like if you're already like a hairstylist or something that's established then um, I would try that first to see if it's available. And if not, a good rule of thumb is to not use uh, like dashes in between words. Like say, like if it's like I love hair dot com, you wouldn't want to have the dashes like that. That's going to make it very challenging for people to um, remember that type of name. Another thing I would suggest too is when you're searching for um, your website name is to not have two words that end with the same letter and the next word start with the same letter. So if it was like hair race, I mean obviously I don't even know what that would be, but you know, but you get the idea. So you don't want to have a two letters like that together because that that also becomes uh, confusing for people when they try and type in your to try to find your name. Uh, another thing is you don't want to put things that have multiple variations of spelling. Uh, so, like, you don't want to have the word, like, for, like, like this, because they don't know if to do to spell for, or for, or the number for, or, you know, and so on. And same thing with two, because then they don't know which version of your, of two you, you want to put in there. And I also recommend don't using, or not using any, uh, Domain name with a number in it, so don't be like don't you don't you're not gonna want to use like hair for you. dot com. And another thing too, another good tip is uh, trying to use words that are spelled correctly, um, and not like a not like don't use like uh, like for example for hair for you like hair for you. Don't like use the letter U. You don't want to spell it out, but you also don't want to use this anyway because it's using the word for I just mentioned not to use. Um, but I just want to give those examples off the bat. Um, and then when you do this, you're going to, you may run into a few times where it's going to like say, uh, where you type in a name like hair, or let's say, I love hair dot com. Oops. I think they're typing too quickly here. And you see, like, okay, it's already taken. Um, another thing I'd recommend also is only get the, you're only going to want to, you're going to make sure your name, domain name, or website name is going to be the .com version. You're not going to want the .love, .org, info, net, all these other things they come up with. Um, because it doesn't matter what you use, this is what people are going to type in when they're searching for you. They're going to type in .com. It's just like ingrained in this for over the last, you know, how many years um, that the internet has been on. So I'd recommend not using like, you know, like, oh, I, this is perfect on naming, but dot .info is available. So I try to get that. I and mean, I would not recommend that. Um, so keep searching until you like, you know, you find a, a dot .com that's available. And then once you find that uh, a domain name that is available, then the next step is if you don't have a dom if you don't have an email address, that's the same name. I'd recommend getting that as well. So we recommend using Gmail for the email account. And when you're doing that, so you'd also do a search in here. So you like create a new account, you go to gmail.com, which I'll we can I'll put the link in there. And then you just fill in this information. And then when you're searching for the username also, you'd want to do the same as the domain name that you found that was available. So obviously not the dot com part of it though, but the first part. So if it was like I love hair. Yeah, let's see that's already taken also. So you want to make sure they're they're available on both, ideally. And the little uh, rule here though is if the domain name is available and it's not on Gmail, 
uh, that's not the end of the world for Gmail because we can do some things to make it uh, work for your Gmail anyway. So more importantly is obviously getting the domain name that you want because that's where everybody's going to type in to find you. An email address, we can get there's a workaround if it's not available. Okay, the next step you're going to go, you want to do, okay, so now that being said, so now w once you've found the name here and then that's available and then you want to go to Gmail and create that account first. And the reason is because now you're going to, it's ideal you want to keep your whole business under one, you know, to be able to track or um, communication wise to go under one email address. So that way when you go back to GoDaddy, if you've never used them before and you, when you uh, get the domain name, you want to have the account number, I mean the account email address be the same. That way, you know, when you, an, like a renewal comes up for the domain name um, or anything related to the business is all, you know, and under one email address. So you would sign up here with the email address you just created on Gmail. Okay, and after you've done that, the next step would be uh, we can integrate your website with either PayPal or with Stripe. And uh, they're both excellent. Uh, this is how this is what's going to allow you to accept credit cards on your website. And to create an account, if you don't have one yet, you just go to sign up. And then you enter the email address that you've just created. And you can do you need a personal or business account, but I recommend doing business since this, that's what you're doing it for. And you can start with the free one. You don't need it. You don't even need to upgrade to the pro one yet if you don't want to. Uh, so you just clicked on select standard. And then that's what's going to ask you for the email address. And this is how PayPal works. It's all tied to an email address. So you put the email address that you just created over here into that box on the, from Gmail. And then uh, go to the next step with that. Now uh, with Stripe, click on sign up right here. And then again, it's tied to an email as well. Uh, so you'd enter that email address and then create a password and then confirm it and then create your Stripe account. And then they both have a few more steps after that because they'll need like your information, which um, if you need help with that, I can, you can give me a call and I can uh, help walk you through. And I may even make a video of actually creating accounts on, on all these so you can see the whole step by step tutorials and then for some people uh, if they don't want if you don't want your personal cell phone number or you know any number you don't want to be on your website but you obviously want a, a way for customers to contact you uh, we recommend this this one uh, as far as the phone service because it's by far one of the best we've ever used and we personally actually use this company and we've used over uh, actually We've used either seven or eight phone service companies over the years, and uh, this one way head and shoulders is better than all the ones we've ever used, and it's also the cheapest, which is amazing. Um, I mean, the one we were using before this was almost eight hundred dollars a month, and this one's like the highest one they have is fifteen dollars a month if you pay month by month. And what's cool about them is they, if you want, you can even get a toll-free phone number and uh, local number as well and even you can even text message you know your customers back and forth through your business number and what's neat is it works through an app so regardless of what type of phone you have apple or android it'll it'll still work and and when, when someone calls it'll call through that app as well so you'll know it's a customer calling you from your website so it won't you know, you know you'll know how to answer the phone the right way obviously and of course you can set up your own uh, separate voicemail and things for as well and anyway you can read through, read all that stuff here what you can do but I would recommend this one for sure and I'll put again put the link in there and that's really it for uh, to, for the, what we need to get started actually don't even need this if you have your own phone number you want to use anyway um, but that's the information we need to get going and uh, once that's done uh, you can email me the username and password for your GoDaddy account and of course, tell me, let me know the email address you used uh, for your company and also the email address for your Stripe and or PayPal account that you created for your to take credit cards. And then obviously if you do this, the phone number that you, you're getting from them. And uh, once that's done, well, I'll, I'll get contacted with you again. 
and we'll go on to the next step, which is actually pretty simple stuff. And we're excited to get you guys started. And if you have any other questions, uh, you can feel free to email me at thomas, it's T-H-O-M-A-S, at wealthyhair.com. And thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.